All right, so uh, where we left off, we had just finished creating cats. I did not have a chance to look into our logo issue, but I will soon, I promise. Um, so uh, essentially, we've built the base of our application. Uh, so this is uh, going to lay the foundation for the rest of our functionality that exists in this application. Uh, we're eventually going to create links in here that will link off to uh, individual detail pages for our cats. Uh, we'll also be, once we get into that detail page, we'll be viewing all of the cat's toys and all of the cat's meals, all of that. Uh, it's going to be great fun from here. So, um, do, 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 do. In the next lecture that we do, we are going to be working with actual models so we can replace all of our fake dummy data with real data. That's going to be step two in this process. What am I doing? Calendar. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at Django models. So we are going to uh, define uh, models for our data entities. Right now we have cats, uh, but we'll eventually have feedings and toys. Uh, we are going to also learn how to generate migrations when models are added or if models are updated. Uh, we're going to run pending migrations, and then we're going to implement a details page that is going to exist for a single model instance. So each one of our cats will have data associated with them. Uh, once again, you can pull my code by using this git fetch all in the git upstream, uh, hard, git reset hard upstream main. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we are now, we've worked on our URLs, uh, we've worked on our views, and we've worked on templates. What we're going to really focus on in this lecture is our models and then uh, communicating with our database as well. So uh, first, though, we're going to start off with a home view. So uh, we're going to get this kind of up to snuff. Uh, right now, our home is really, really sad and depressing. Of course, I'm not running a server, so it's even more sad and depressing. Finish this push, that would be good. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so if you need my code, you can't find it. Run my server again, and whenever we go back to this page, our home page right now looks like this. Uh, this is clearly not going to work well for us. We need a little bit more going on here. So uh, right now we're just sending this response whenever we call on this route. Uh, so we're just going to need to make a new template. Uh, this is just going to live in our templates directory. So we are going to touch a, our main app slash templates slash home dot HTML. That will create a home.html file inside of your templates directory. And we're going to replace our existing uh, response uh, in our views. Instead of doing this HTTP response, what we want to do is render this about, or sorry, render our home.html page. So we're going to return the request and home.html should be render and we can also remove this import entirely this line to from django.http.response import http response we don't need this anymore Farewell.
you so, scroll back up to the very top of that for a second? Because I don't think I have import request. <laughs> I don't know why, but it seems to have been working. I don't have that either. I'm not sure we even need that. Probably not. Because we're getting our request from, like, this yeah, is just a... I think that might have been, like, render. an auto-import that might uh, have okay. occurred, potentially. That's what I would guess. So we're, we should be good, though. VS Code was trying to protect me but instead it was being dumb. <laughs> All right, so uh, we are now rendering this home.html page. Let's go ahead and write this out. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, code this by hand. You're free to copy and paste this, though, if you don't want to get the rep in. Uh, but what we're going to be doing here, just to overview, is we're extending our base.html. So that is this base file that we created last time. And we are going to make sure that we are loading static files because we're going to be using static files here. So I have blocks that I am able to extend off of my base.html. One of those is going to be this head block. The other one is going to be this content block. So I'm going to start by extending that head block with block head. And then everything I put in here is going to extend this base.html file right here. Whatever I put in this over here is going to be inserted over here in the file that I'm extending. So. I'm going to extend this with a H or a CSS file. Again, this is going to be a static file. So this is going to be CSS slash home.css. And then I'm going to have another block of content. So that is going to extend the content block out of base.html right here. That works because we've named them the same thing. So this home.html. And in here, this is the code that's going to be specific to this page. So I'm going to have a section uh, with a logo container class. Uh, this has a couple of images inside it, and that's it. So our image is going to be coming from static. This is going to be image, images, slash, splash, dot SVG. So we're going to have some alt text for this. Cat collector, cat. I'm going to have another image in here. I'm eventually going to need to split this across lines. So I'm just getting that out of the way. Uh, we're going to be loading in another static file. Again, it's going to be an image. slash logo type svg and I'm just going to throw some alt text in here. Fantastic. So that is this entire HTML file. One second. Okay, so uh, this is this entire uh, HTML file. 
And if we reload our page, if our server's running, gotta be running your server. Boom, hit the logo. Uh, of course, this could look a little bit better. It's kind of gigantic whenever we are full screen on this. Uh, so we're going to need a uh, new CSS file for us on this as well. This is going to be home.css. So we're going to need to touch a file for that. So we're going to touch main app slash static slash CSS slash home.css. Um, again, all of the work in here is pretty much uh, going to be setting up flex, flex boxes and also making sure that things have a correct width and height and margin, all of that kind of stuff. Not going to spend any time writing out with you all. Just makes our app look pretty. All right, so now we should be able to go back to this and start our server and go back to this and refresh our page. Much better. We have a cute little cat collector logo. All right, any questions about this? My only question is, I think you've already addressed, we are, we are all having the issue with when we expand the screen, the top logo goes away. That is correct. Uh, but on this page, that is actually going to be our desired behavior uh, okay. because that links off to this like single, like that links off to the page that we're at. There's no reason to display that when we're on this page. We've also like have this logo here as well. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that on this page because that's the expected behavior. And there's some CSS in here that actually is supposed to, yeah, display done on our header logo container. But that should not be applied to our other ones, which is why it's really fascinating that it's actually happening. All right, so uh, next off, we're going to be talking about models now that we have our nice little homepage. Uh, this will link us off to uh, all of our cats. And now I want to actually have some real cats in a database rather than our fake database that we've already structured. So let's talk about models in Django. So all of the models that we create are going to be defined as classes. Uh, we're eventually going to be able to go into extending those classes to make us do really, really fun things with Django. Uh, Django considers our model to be our single source of truth in a Django application. So there's a lot of code that's going to be happening in your model. With Express uh, and uh, with Mongoose, we didn't necessarily have much going on in our model at all. It was really like, here, I'm going to create this schema and then I'm going to export it. We might have added one or two things, but that was really just about it. Uh, we just kind of had those things going on. And uh, really, whenever we were messing with our models in uh, Mongoose, all we were doing was defining a schema and exporting it. Uh, at a base level, that's exactly how Django works as well. We're going to be creating a class that's going to define kind of a schema like structure, just like we had in Express. Uh, but we will be extending the model much more than we did uh, with uh, our Express applications. So all of the models for our applications are going to be defined in models.py. So again, just kind of like with our urls.py, how this is going to look pretty long by the time we're finished with this application, the same thing is going to be true of your models.py. This is going to be a pretty long file when we're done with it. 
it's going to hold a lot of data inside of it. So uh, what we have in here is going to be, uh, this is kind of how our models are going to look. And you'll see in here that each uh, attribute that we have is going to be represented by its own class. So like we'll have a char field and a text field and an integer field. All of these uh, kind of fields are all going to be classes. There are tons of field types that we have uh, within Django. We can look through all of these. We will be touching on about, I would say, eh, maybe a handful of these. Uh, there's clearly tons and tons and tons of options that you have in here. Uh, so the, again, this would be a document to reference whenever you're going and actually building out your projects and you want to have additional functionality. You're going to want to come to this page in the documentation and see what kind of fields can I put on a model in a database? So there's this model field reference that you have available to you. So we're going to start with just a few though. We're going to have a chart field and a text field and also an integer field. Uh, and that's going to exist on our cat class that we have. So let's go ahead and build this out. So we're going to make a class cat. This is going to be models.model. All of our cats are going to have a name. That name is going to be a char field. It's going to have a max, uh, I need a colon here, a max underscore length of 100 characters. Um, I'm also going to have a breed. Uh, I'm also going to have a description. Whoa. The max length of 250. And we'll see how these actually show on our screen uh, whenever we get to that stage, but these will display a little bit differently and they are natively a little bit differently or a little bit different. So uh, this will be a model dot integer field. So just to kind of touch a little bit more on that, if we go back to our doc over here uh, and say we look at a char field, So, uh, and we see in here in this documentation that we have a max length and then we could pass any options that we wanted to as well. Uh, so this is a string field for small to large size strings. And then for large amount of text, use a text field. It just straight up says, hey, if you want to use a lot of text, check out this text field that you're able to use. So again, the default form widget for this is going to be a text area. So uh, like falling back on our HTML knowledge, our text area is going to be like this big piece of uh, form entry area that we have available to us. So that's when we would want to use a text area. Is this all kind of like reverting back to what we learned this morning about allocating memory? Um, and... In a way, you're really kind of like with how Django works, we are eventually going to get into class-based views. And that is going to give us a way to essentially just create forms by putting in like a single line of code. Like previously we had to like make individual inputs and we had to give those fields names and we had like had to make sure that a bunch of stuff matched up on the front end and the back end. Like we had all this work to do. But Django will actually handle all of that work for us so that we don't have to think about any of it. 
And it is actually super, super, super handy. Um, and that's kind of what the point, the purpose of this is. Uh, we could put any amount of text that we wanted to really inside of this char field, but we could instead use a text field and we would get a better interface for our user to interact with. And we'll see how this plays out here in a little bit too. So good question though. All right. Uh, and you can see here, um, this is, I kind of just already touched on this, but our chart field will use the input type of text. Uh, whereas our text field is going to use a text area instead. So uh, I'm going to do a couple review questions in here. Uh, so, uh, and you might have touched on this also in your uh what you used yesterday uh, to talk about uh, or through your uh, tutorial as well on uh, with Django stuff. So uh, in Django, what is going to be used to perform CRUD database operations? Wouldn't that just be the database model? 100% the model. And how are we defining our model in Django? Class? It's a class, yes. Our models are all going to be Python classes. And our ERD entity is going to map to a blank in Django, which matches to a blank in our database. The model in Django. Cool. Yes. Table in the database. One hundred percent. So we have our model in Django that we have here, and then these are our models are going to be used to create tables in our database. We're going to create those tables in our database by making and running migrations. So migrations, and this has come up a few times, but migrations are going to be used to synchronize the databases or our schema in our database with the model that we've created in our application. So we're going to take the model in our application that we've built, and we're going to tell our database about it, and the database is going to go and build out that schema that we're going to actually use to interact with our data. So these migrations are used to change our database over time. So as we write out our application and we are, uh, we're changing up our model because we have different requirements in our application as we build it out, these migrations are going to keep our database and our application in sync with one another. These migrations, though, can be destructive. So say I take out an age field here. If I take that out, then boom, there's no more. After I make this migration, there's no more age, age column in our database on this cat table. I've gotten rid of it. So all of that data that was associated with that would go away. And you're already familiar with how to do migrations. Uh, we've done this uh, migration, this ma Python 3 manage.py migrate a couple times now. Uh, but whenever you make changes to your actual model, what you need to do is actually go in and run make migrations. Like I was saying earlier, if you're working on a group with a Django project, there is only one person that will ever do uh, do this make migrations command. So we've defined this cat model that exists here. 
but our, our database doesn't know about it yet. And there's no tables in the database to hold any of this information that we've built over here. So we need to tell the database that, Hey, I have a cat model that exists in this application. So we do that with Python three manage.py make migrations. And if everything is all good as part of your model, you'll see that we have this output. We created model cat. And if we come in here, um, actually, after we do this, let's do our uh, Python three manage.py migrate. So you're going to see that we now have this migration that is being applied into our database. David, I think you touched on this yesterday, but could you just, what's the, what's the difference between these two commands again, the make migrations and the migrate? Absolutely. So make migrations is preparing your, uh, essentially preparing your application to talk to the database. Migrating is actually the act of talking to the database itself. So that's a two-step process. I have to prepare to talk to the database. I have to create all the files I need to talk to the database. And then I need to take those files once they're compiled and actually speak to my database. Cool, 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 cool. That's why you only want one person making migrations because that preparation step is you compiling these files for you to actually talk to the database. So say you have one person that's made migrations and another person that's made migrations, those files are all going to live up on github.com. So whenever you do a poll, you're going to have two conflicting files that both do the same thing, that both do interactions on the same table that say, I need to go and create a table in this database. Please and thank you. And then when people run this migrate, you're going to have two files that say, make me a table in this database called cat. And you're going to have all kinds of conflicts. So you only, that's why you only want one person running that, um, running that make migrations command. So you are able to totally come in to this migration and see what is going to go on. You can see in here that, hey, I have an operation and this operations array is what gets executed whenever we run migrate. So part of this operation is to create a model called cat. That cat is going to have these fields. And a lot of this is going to look really, really similar to the code that you wrote in your models.py. Like I said, again, this is not something that you necessarily will touch ever, and you probably shouldn't really worry about opening these files. Um, but if you are curious to see what is happening whenever you're doing make migrations, this is what's going on. All right. So. Uh, we did our make migrations and we migrated. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what actually happened in our database. Uh, you don't need to follow along with this, but I'm going to list uh, my databases in here and I'm going to do a uh, connect to my cat collector database. I'm going to list all of the tables that exist in this database. And you will now see that there is a new table called main underscore app underscore cat. Uh, so in here, you'll also see that, hey, we have like Django admin stuff. We have like all of these stuff are just automatically created for us. 
uh, as part of having a Django project, you're also going to see a lot of auth stuff in here. So these came from our settings.py, the applications that we have up here. So in here, you can see that a lot of these directly correspond to the apps that we have installed. It's just preemptively creating some tables for us so that we're able to do, so that we're able to make use of these installed apps. But that's what all these extra tables are in here for. So, all right. Uh, so this table is going to be empty at the moment, but we're actually going to uh, be able to update this over time and make sure that we can put data onto this table in our database. So. Uh, and just to touch on, like, just to confirm when it's necessary to actually make migrations and migrate, anytime that you touch this model and you've added fields to it or anything like that, um, that is when you need to make migrations uh, and do a migrate. So if you were to come in and you add a field in here onto our cat model, we need to make migrations and we need to migrate. All right. So moving on, a uh, couple of review questions. Uh, what are used to update a database's schema over time as an application's functionality evolves? Anybody? Is it uh, no, no. migrations? Yeah. So. This is whenever we do our migrations, that's what is going to actually talk to our database and have its schema change. And when do we actually need to make and run migrations? Have you changed something in the models? 100%. Literally just said that. Whenever an ad a model is added or updated in a way that it impacts the database's schema, that's when you're going to have to run your migrations. So in this instance, though, we don't need to like clear out the entire database like we did in MongoDB, right? No, um, you will absolutely run into instances where you do need to clear out the database uh, here. But like in this case, a lot of times you're able to make migrations and migrate just pretty much anytime you want at will and not necessarily impact um, that existing database structure that you've built. Will it just like, if you're adding new pieces to it, will they just be blank for the things that were in there previously? And what a great not... question. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> if you have existing, so if you're adding a row or sorry, adding a column to an existing table, Django is going to prompt you and say, uh, cool, you have existing rows in this table. What would you like me to put in those cells? for this column, for the existing data that I already have uh, here. So in that case, a lot of times, like you're going to be making a reference to like an ID or something like that. Uh, you're going to be adding a relationship. So the default that you're going to want to put in there might be something like an ID for a, a like a foreign key uh, is typically what you're going to put in there. Uh, but a lot of times, like say you're adding a, um, uh, say you're adding like a email address to like a user uh, table. In that case, you might want to do something a little bit different. Uh, you might just have like, that's something you would really want to think about beforehand, honestly. Uh, like, you know, why, why would you not have an email associated with a user whenever you're creating it? Uh, maybe plan a little bit better. Uh, that's, you know, kind of the challenges that you're going to face as you go through and you do this database administration stuff though with the SQL databases is like, hey, we need, need we need values to throw into these columns as we create them. So what do we actually put there? Any other questions? Cool. All right. So 
the next thing that we're going to do is uh, actually start and uh, do some CRUD. And we're going to use Django's ORM to be able to do that. And the ORM stands for an object relation, sorry, relational mapper. So that's going to actually take your objects that we have in uh, Python, which are really dictionaries, but whatever, uh, and change those into uh, something that will go into a re relational database and vice versa. So our ORM is going to allow us to write object-oriented code instead of using actual SQL directly. So we're not going to be writing a bunch of SQL stuff like we did yesterday. We're just going to be uh, writing this more object-oriented code like we're used to. Uh, kind of like with our ODM that we had uh, back with uh, Mongoose, whenever we were using that, this is going to allow us to be more productive and allow us to you know, talk in the language that we're familiar and talking in, and Django is just going to handle the rest. All right, so um, this also does allow us to kind of just, we're allowed to write the same thing over here, no matter what kind of SQL database we're using. Uh, Django is going to map this over into uh, something that is going to be recognizable by the actual database itself. So. All right. Uh, part of what we get with Django's ORM is it's going to automatically generate a bunch of different methods that we have for each model. Uh, and some of, sometimes we'll actually override those uh, methods that you'll see later on. Uh, but we're basically allowed to filter so we can uh, query these. Uh, we can query our databases in this way. We can order stuff so we can order the data that we get back from the database in different ways. And we can even pull in data from uh, our, using that relationship that we map between each one of our uh, different models that we've built. Uh, there is this giant list of uh, database API stuff that we can call here, like just forever and ever and ever long. We'll touch on a few of these. Um, so for example, we will be doing um, like retrieving specific objects with filters. Uh, so this would allow us to do something that will return uh, objects that match given lookup parameters. And then we'll also be using exclude as well. So this is going to return objects that do not match a given lookup parameter. Uh, so that's just kind of a quick example of what we will be doing uh, with some of these methods that Django gives us. And we'll, again, touch on these examples over and over uh, for the next couple of days. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to do a quick little bit in the Python interactive shell uh, just to kind of show you what this will look like whenever we go into uh, whenever we start doing stuff in our Django ORM. A lot of the queries that we perform here are going to be really, really similar to what we do whenever we write our views. Because we're using the Django ORM here to be able to interact with our database. So what we're going to do now is get you set up with a couple of cats just so you have some data in your database. And we'll touch on something that you probably already saw yesterday with the Django admin console that's going to be much easier for us to use. And so we won't really come back to this very often, but it's good to know that it's here. So what we're going to do now is run Python 3 manage.py shell. I will say, as you go through this, make super sure that you're not like 
doing typos or anything like that. Make sure all, everything that you write in here is accurate and that you don't have to like go back and uh, you know delete something out of this database or potentially drop the database. You're interacting directly with the database here. So uh, there's not as much protection involved as there is if we have like code surrounding some of this stuff. But uh, since we have our uh, migration done, we'll already have uh, this table set up in our database. So what we're going to do is from main underscore app dot models import cat. This is going to be our cat model. We built right up here. And now I can call on cat objects dot all. And this is what should be returned to us. There are no cats that exist in our database yet. So this is going to be our, uh, what's returned from our query. So, uh, in this, uh, you'll see that there's a fun note here and this is pretty important. So, uh, so anytime we want to perform query operations on the model to retrieve model objects or rows from our database, it's going to be done via a manager object. So we're going to get this manager on every single model that we create. And it's this objects attribute. And it's going to be attached. So like, say we have, well, eventually we'll have toys. So we'll have uh, toy dot objects and then dot all. That would get us all of our toys. Uh, so that's, this manager is essentially what we do our queries through. And then we have this query set that gets returned back to us. And we're able to refine this query set and we can do so by attaching additional methods onto it. So just to be clear, cat is the model dot the manager dot a method on the manager. Yes, exactly. Got it. All right. So, um, let's go ahead and look at uh, how we're going to actually end up saving things into our database. So what we're going to do is make a variable named C and we're going to use our cat model to create this uh, cat. So this is going to have a name. I'm just going to copy this directly out of the lecture. Um, again, you want to make sure that you are uh, not, uh, make sure that you're following along exactly with what's written. If you do change anything in here, uh, make sure that it's just what's inside of these quotes, if you want to like change the cat's name or whatever. Uh, but you will protect yourself if you just follow along with what's on your screen. All right, so I have made my cat. Is it an issue that those are single or that those are double quotes? Because I know that in SQL, you're supposed to use like single quotes. Um, for this, it will not actually matter. Because these are strings in Python is essentially what's going on here. Gotcha. All right, so this and I can call on C dot double underscore dict double underscore. And what I'll get back is C as a dictionary, this cat that I made C dot dict is going to be this. 
So you'll see in here that this does have an ID because as we saw back whenever I made this migration, all of our cats need to have an ID. That's part of what's going to be expected here. But it's been set to none currently because I haven't actually saved this in our database yet. But the rest of my information should be here as part of this dictionary. So you'll see it has a name, it has a breed, it has a description, and it has an age. So let's go ahead and save this cat. So we're going to call on c.save. This is a method that exists on our, uh, on our class, our cat class. So I'm calling on c.save. That's going to save this uh, object that I've created, this dictionary, up to our database. And now, after this is saved in our database, I can call on c.id, and it will be one. This is the first item I've put into this database. And now I'm going to call on cat.objects.all again. And I should have an item that gets returned to me. And you can see in our query set, I have an array. And that array is holding onto a cat. Cat object one. We'll talk about uh, actually overriding the name here so that we get useful information instead of cat object one. That will be the next thing we do. After you create another cat. So you can go ahead and uh, reuse the C variable, or I'm just going to make a new variable uh, called, uh, actually just call it lowercase cat. And I'm going to make this again into our cat. Does it matter if you reuse the same? Um, you can variable? totally reuse the same variable if you want. Okay. Sure. Won't, won't make any difference. Python. So again, you're going to want to write out this cat exactly as uh, we did above. You're going to give it a name. You're going to give it a breed, description, and an age. And then make sure you close your parentheses at the end and that you've got commas between each one of these uh, different values that we're putting in here. What would happen if we didn't do that correctly? If you don't do that correctly, then um, I would go ahead and see what's in your cat dot underscore or double oh, no, underscore. No, no, I, I didn't. I didn't mess it up. I'm just wondering oh, okay. what happens if oh, in the future okay, okay, I okay. mess it up. Right. Okay. Gotcha. You won't be doing this very often in the future at all. Like literally, this is the last time we're going to be doing this because uh, we have the fun admin console for us to use instead. Uh, but if you mess this up, then something might not save correctly into your database. Um, and if that happens, you might have an invalid row, uh, which could potentially cause issues in the future. But that's totally cool. What we would do is just drop the database at this point. There's no reason to like, you know, go and delete individual rows when it's super easy for us to drop databases. You might destroy the universe, but no big deal. Yeah, totally. <laughs> The, the universe was hinging on your cat in your database on your local computer. Absolutely. <laughs> but 
butterfly effect. All right, so after you've created your cat, you're going to call on uh, your cat.save or whatever variable name you use there. And I'm going to check on cat.id after I do that. And if everything went well, cool, we have an entry in our database. Uh, let me make sure. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and leave this open down here. But on our model, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a, a dunder string method. So this is going to give us a much nicer name instead of this cat object one here. This is going to allow us to override the default behavior of this. So this is going to take in self. Remember the self is this in JavaScript, same thing. And we're going to return self.name. So now instead of um, instead of seeing this cat object one in here, we're going to see the name of the cat whenever we're asking for the whenever we're asking for a string representation of our individual cat. Uh, so let's go ahead and exit this real quick because those changes are not going to be reflected immediately. And we're going to once again, go back into the shell. David, um, sorry. Yes. You, I don't understand how that self thing is. Yeah, so essentially whenever we have this, this is referring to whatever cat that we are currently looking at. So whatever cat gets returned here, we are going to return that cat's name. And that's going to be the string representation of this cat in our database. So instead of saying cat object one here, the string representation of the cat is instead going to be the cat's name. Thank you. Yeah, totally. So let's go ahead and import our cat model once more since we exited it. So we need to do from main underscore app dot models import cat. So now whenever I do something like cat dot objects dot all, we see the cat's name here instead of this like useless cat object one. So this is how we kind of do some fun uh, string representation of our cat in our database. You're probably going to attach this to pretty much every model that you create or something like it. However you want your, uh, your actual data in your database to be represented, this is much more useful like seeing something like this, than seeing something like this. So I'm seeing cat object one and cat object two instead of their names, which makes me nervous. Did you exit the shell? Yep, after you and then did I went this? back in. Yep. Okay. And in your model, you have this. These two lines. Yeah. And this is not back like this. This is indented under the class. Oh, shit. <laughs> that probably did that'll, it. That'll do it. <laughs> exit the shell and just go back in again? Yep, exit the shell, go back in again, and you should have it after doing that. This is overriding the default method that exists on this class. This method already existed, and it was returning this. Instead, what we're doing is overriding this and having it return the name of the cat instead. 
This is something that already existed on this model. We're just changing it to be a little bit different. You're going to be doing this quite a lot in Django, whenever you want to change things. Does this not count towards like the thing that makes us need to have to migrate? It does not uh, because this is, we're overriding a definition inside of Django itself. So this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with our database directly. This is Django interacting with data from the database. Good question. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually update this in uh, here as well. So what I'm going to do is uh, get the first object. So I'm going to do C equals cat dot objects dot first. And again, these are really, really similar to what you'll be using within your view functions and within your templates as well. Uh, so this is really like super similar to the functions that you're going to be writing inside of uh, your views. You would just, um, sometimes you'll, in your templates, you'll end up not invoking this because again, methods on all of our uh, objects are automatically invoked or dictionaries rather. All right, so this is our cat. And we can see if we just hit see here that the cat is biscuit. And if we want to change the name of the cat, it's as easy as going C dot name equals rubber biscuit. I don't know why you would name a cat rubber biscuit but here we are. Make sure that you save the cat. And now if you call that entry in our database, now it's going to say rubber biscuit. All right, so um, let's see. Uh, we'll go ahead and run through this real quick. Um, and then I'm going to let you all go on a break before we actually jump back into our code. So uh, that was essentially how we update inside of our database and what's going on kind of behind the scenes and what Django is doing. So the next thing that we're able to call uh, that we're going to do is filter and see uh, what we get returned to us on the filter. So now that I have this rubber biscuit entry, I am able to call on cat.objects.filter. I can use the name, which is equal to rubber biscuit. And now I'm only going to get a single cat back. I got the cat with the name of rubber biscuit. So you can see here that you'll remember kind of back on yesterday, using objects.filter and objects.exclude, what I showed you earlier in the Django documentation, that is really similar to writing a where clause in SQL. Um, again, there are quite a few field lookups that you're able to do. If you check out this documentation, there's all kinds of ways that you're able to manage what you get back from uh, your ORM, the Django ORM. So uh, let's look at another option. So you're able to use this name Dunder contains and then look for a string. And that's going to be really similar to a select star from main app cat where name is like, and then BIS. So let's try that. We're going to do cat.objects.filter. 
filter. And then we're going to do instead of name by itself, we're going to do name dunder contains. So that double underscore. And we're going to throw in this. And again, we're going to expect one cat to come back. And of course, I didn't close out my parentheses. Da, 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 da. And I also spelt everything wrong, too. Gotta love it. Wow. Can I type? There we go. All right, so you can see that I got back Rubber Biscuit. Say I did just be here because I do have a uh, bonk in my database as well. So I would expect if I capitalize his name, which I didn't, whoops, that's a problem. So I'm not going to get back both of them. I'm still just going to get back one. All right, so let's go ahead and see another way to filter. So we have uh, a, like essentially in here, what I want you to grasp is that you have these different lookup types that you're able to do on our different fields. So you have a, you have this Dunder contains, you have Dunder LTE, that's going to be uh, less than or equal to. And this is really going to be something that you can do on your individual fields. So you have a field, and then after it, you have this dunder, and then this lookup type. This is really going to be how you do any of this kind of super specific filtering inside of your Django ORM. Uh, well, let's go ahead and just write this out so we see what we get back. So I'm going to do an objects.filter, and then I'm going to do age dunder less than or equal to Three. What are we saying is less than or equal to three? That's what I'm using. The age. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Yep. It, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and you're totally allowed to chain these filters as well. So you can have a filter in here that, so you do like dot filter age less than or equal to three, and then uh, dot filter uh, name contains. Totally just change those, chain those uh, filters together on top of one another. So if there's and functionality, is there or functionality? Like if we put like a, uh, one of the straight down lines or no? Um, so there, is but I don't quite remember it off of the top of my head. Um, I'm sure that we could look at this field lookup. Um, let's see, or uh, of course I'm never going to find anything with that. Um, da, 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 da. Here, let's just search around Django or filter or. Of course, this takes me right back to where I was. I know that there is a way to do this. Oh, SQL. Ba, 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 ba. <sighs> Chaining filters. There is absolutely a way to do it. I'm not going to find it while we're sitting here, though. So, that's fine. Just a question. Know that there is. <laughs> All right. So, uh, let's say we wanted to read a single record. Um, so, both of these return lists of objects that we've seen so far. Uh, so, we've got cat.objects.all and cat.objects.filter. Those are returning uh, lists. But you'll probably almost always want to get back a single item whenever you're doing a uh, lookup, especially for like a show function or show functionality. So whenever we're doing that, 
we want to instead change our all to a dot get. So what we're going to do for that is cat dot objects dot get, and then I'm going to look for an ID that's equal to one. This is really similar to show functionality. And you see there, hey, we get back rubber biscuit. If I change this to two, I'm going to get back bonk. There is a chance that dot get doesn't get back what you're looking for. Say I change this to four. Look, it's an error. Cat matching query does not exist. So you're going to want to do some error handling whenever you have this. There's always the chance that you're not going to get back what you think you're getting back. And of course, there is a lot of different ways for us to sort as well. So we can do sorting by name. I don't know why I wrote name there. We can do an order by. And there we go. We get back what we're doing ordered by name. We can switch this to negative name. That's going to, instead of being in uh, ascending order, that's going to be in descending order. Uh, we are also able to come in and get a single thing from this. So I could put in something like negative age, and this is going to be the oldest cat in our database. Poor bunk. All right, so this is just kind of an intro to how we're going to be writing uh, our uh, different queries and how we're going to essentially be interacting with this database. Uh, but we won't be doing it in the shell anymore. We're going to be pretty much switching over to work entirely in uh, Django and its ORM, and we'll also be using the admin console, which you all probably saw yesterday, which is so much fun. Uh, but first, before we actually start uh, dealing with this, we are going to uh, go in and actually take a quick break. So why don't you all be back here in nine minutes and we'll continue on. Hey, David, I, uh, I just jumped back in the meeting. I had to step out for that meeting with Jen I had. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to do a pull. Uh, is there anything else I should be aware of? Anything weird that I wouldn't be able to pull normally? Um, so we added some data into our database. Uh, so that's pr probably the bulk of what you missed. I'm guessing I didn't see exactly when you left, but I'm going to say that that's okay. Okay, cool. That's probably most of what you missed. Um, the only other thing we've done as part of this lecture is actually come in and set up a this home page here um, that's the only thing we've done so far so cool. everything else has just been us screwing around in our database uh, and we're actually going to touch on the uh the admin functionality as well uh so that you can really create your cats in there and you'll be fine cool okay um and uh is the uh have you pushed recently um i will go ahead and push right now thanks sir Uh, you will actually need to uh, do a uh, make migrations and migrate after this as well. Um, okay. Yeah, let me get you that stuff. Forgot about that. Um, so you're going to run that command first, followed by this command after you've done a pull.
And I just pushed. This is after I pull, right? Yes, correct. After you pull. Thank you.
All right, everybody. Come on back.